All right, this wants us to graph the curve determined by y equals x cubed. Oh, man, it didn't show up on my Sorry? Minus 3. Oh, minus 3. And I will put that in. Thank you. So, uh, whenever we graph these, I'm going to zoom in on this, by the way. Now, this one did not give us an axis, so we need to make an x and a y axis. All right. So I've drawn the x and y axis there. In order to graph a nonlinear equation, we definitely, definitely should have a table and some values to go with it. So we're looking at x and y. And we're going to choose values of x and find corresponding y values. So I'm just going to go 0, 1, 2, negative 1, and negative 2, and just see if there's a pattern that forms from this. So if x is 2, then I've got uh, 2 cubed, which is 8 minus 3, which would make this y5. So I got a point at 2, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And if x is 1, then I have 1 cubed, which is 1 minus 3, giving us a negative 2 when x is 1. When x is 0, then we have an even negative 3 like this. Um, if it's, if a variable is cubed, then usually it, it becomes very symmetric. All right. In fact, it does for most of them. Unless we have some value in front of the x cubed or there's parentheses that's being cubed, which we have neither of in this case. We can check that. If I have negative 1 cubed, then I get negative 1 minus 3 which is going to give me a negative 4 corresponding with the x is negative 1. So you guys see how it kind of switched there with this, the line of reflection being here at the y-axis. And so if x is a negative 2, then we get a negative 8 minus 3. I don't think that's going to fit on this one. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So maybe it's down here somewhere. What this means is that when I graph this thing, that it's going to be very nonlinear. I don't know. That's okay. And then something like this.